mana chasers, spell dancers. I'm Bad as Fish, and this is a Mini Masters units highlight video. Okay, so with the introduction to Mini Masters of patch 1.45, the Arcane Anomalies, we had a couple of new cards added, which were the mana chasers and the spell dancer. Now, these are interesting cards because they effectively have two versions of the card. You can uh, control which version of the card you're going to use, depending on how much mana you have at the time when you spend it, when you spawn it. And I think that's interesting, especially at the moment with the removal of a lot of the bridge interaction mechanics. So a lot of the ways that players can interact with the game have been removed or reduced. So any sort of card that adds that player uh, interaction, I really like that. So let's have a look and see how that works. So first of all, we got the Mana Chaser. So this is a two mana Crystal Elf Flying Range minion. It has stealth, has 50 health, so pretty weak, and does 25 damage every 1.2 seconds. That was every one second. It was nerfed shortly after release because it was found to be very strong, especially in duos. Now this is a card that on its own is not great, but if you can support it with a Guardian, with a Bannerman, things like that, they can really trade very well if people don't have the right tools. Now, as mentioned, this does have a secondary uh, interaction. So it costs you two mana for one of these, but you do have the option to get three of them. Now, if you are mana surging, which is when you're six or more mana, if you, if you play it, you will get three of them. The offshoot of that is that you will gain three mana freeze. So effectively what that means is the first iteration of the card, it costs you two mana, you get one of them. The second iteration of the card, you can spend five mana, three of them are as a mana freeze, and get three of them. Okay, so that's two for one or five for three. So that's interesting because you can depend, you can spawn if you just want to get one. For example, if you're playing against someone that's got a big counter that just keeps shredding you every time you spend three of spawn three of them, just try to uh, play it so that you only spawn one of them and, and maybe they won't be able to counter that quite so efficiently. Maybe you get some more value out of it. Okay, so um, the mana freeze is interesting because it means that um, it's, a, it's a mechanic that really just works well with Mana Surge with Crystal Elves because um, instead of consuming the overall five mana immediately, it only consumes two and then you can uh, just consume the next three. So you effectively don't drop lower than the two that you've spent. Okay, so that's the first new card, the Mana Chaser. Um, and the second new card is the Spell Dancer. Now, the Spell Dancer we haven't seen very much at all. On paper, this seemed like an interesting card, and I was looking forward to using it. I think it's been overshadowed by the fact that everyone's just using the Mana Chasers. Perhaps if the Mana Chasers get nerfed a little bit more, we'll see some more Spell Dancers. So let's have a look at the Spell Dancer. So this is a three mana Crystal Elf ranged minion, 130 health, 25 DPS. So it's an okay, it's a ranged minion, only has a range of four, so very, very short range, but still ranged. Can hit ground and air. Now, she has mana surge, so if you're at six plus mana, she will get the attack speed boost, sorry. Um, and she always spawns with these two arcane spheres. Now, these arcane spheres are kind of part of the arcane ring. They're also the same as the ones you'll see on the dormant defenders. So they'll do 30 damage to the first thing they interact with. So depending on how you play it, um, hopefully you can get uh, some, some value out of those arcane spheres. Okay, so and as like the, the mana chasers, this has a secondary interaction. So again, if you have six plus mana, so if you're in mana surge, when you spawn this card, it will fire four arcane sparks at a random enemy in the area. The offshoot is it will gain mana freeze. So again, the two variants, you spend three mana for her on her own, or you spend three plus three mana freeze, so six in total, to get her plus the four arcane sparks. But what do the four arcane sparks do? Okay, so they do 50 damage each. So that's a total of 200 damage. So that's a, effectively what you've got is a potential 200 damage removal spell for three mana. So there's a lot of minions that you can kill for that 200 damage. And uh, with it only costing you three mana, that will really be a, a good trade mana wise for you. Now, the way that the arcane sparks are targeted is when you go to spawn her, you will have a strip kind of like how Nirvir's Breath is. 
And that arena-wide strip is the targeting area for her arcane sparks. Now, remember that they will target random enemies within that area. So if there's only one in that area, then you're guaranteed for all four to hit it. Um, if there's multitudes, then they'll be split out and they may go where you want. They may not. So there's a bit of um, a bit of randomness there. But of course, depending on how you aim it, you can you can move her up and down to to move where the strip is. You can potentially get those sparks to hit where you want them to. Uh, and those sparks will not hit face. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure if they were hit buildings or not. Let's uh, perhaps someone in the comments can confirm whether they hit buildings or not. It does say random enemies. Um, I'm not sure what enemies really refers to. Normally we have the, the word minions to mean minions or units to mean minions or buildings. Enemies, not entirely sure um, what that stacks up to be. Okay, so those are the two new cards. And as mentioned, there are the, the, the on-play mechanics. So you can choose which of the variants you want. Um, of course, the way you choose is by making sure that you're either above or below the six mana, mana surge threshold. So hopefully um, that gives people a, a good understanding of how these two new cards work. And uh, next up, we're going to have a look at them in action. OK, so let's have a look at these cards in action. This was a solo ladder match that I had checking out these two new cards. So let's just pause it for a second here. One thing we can see, we've got the two new cards in our hand to start with. As soon as we hit the six mana, then these two have been activated. You can see they've got the yellow border around them. That means their secondary interaction is going to occur. So that means the Spell Dancer will do her Arcane Sparks, or the Mana Chasers will get three of them. Now, we don't really want to start with the Spell Dancer because there's nothing for her to hit. This is a Crystal Elf deck against an Accursed Morelia. So let's see how we get on. The, one of the first things to think about here is against a Accursed Morelia. There's likely to be lots of little small things that are not going to be great for the, uh, the Spell Dancer to hit. So as you can see at the top there, we've spawned the first set of the three uh, Mana Chasers. So they're going to get three of them with the Mana Freeze. And then we're going to protect them with the Guardian. Now the Guardian will protect 75% of the incoming damage. So 75% of the damage they take will be redirected to it. And that's why a Poison Strike doesn't kill them if they're protected. Because a Poison Strike will do um, 160 damage if it's unactivated. Uh, 120 of that will go to the Guardian. 40 of that will go to the Mana Chaser. They have 50 HP so they don't quite die. If they're unprotected by the Guardian for just one tick of the poison, it will kill them. So that's a, a lot of occasions why it looks like that happens. Okay, so we're behind on XP, but we did uh, some reasonable face damage. So when we're playing these Mana Chasers, we're kind of paying attention to what our opponent has as a counter for them. If we're playing them and they're getting instantly spelled and destroyed, then we might need to reconsider... Uh, do we want to spawn them one at a time instead of spending the three if they're going to get Chain Lightning or something like that? So far we haven't seen that counter, but we are behind on XP. Jolo doing Jolo things, of course. Now I will put this deck in the description if you want to try it out. I'm not sure if it's incredible or not, uh, but we've got some good wins with it. So we haven't used the mana... Sorry, the, uh, the, the, the spell chaser yet. But I think we're about to hear. Okay, so there you see. So we'll pause it for a second. It's it's kind of tricky to see how the uh, the uh, the targeting works because we're watching a replay and it doesn't show the targeting. Uh, but basically, we spawned her here. Uh, can you see my cursor? Yes, you can. So there was a big strip of targeting, like near Bear's Breath. The only thing that was in it was this uh, this uh, defenso. So we hit the defenso with all four of the sparks, 200 damage. So I think that's um, a good use of that card. Um, and of course, you've got to be paying attention as the game progresses. Think about, I've got this potential removal. What are my targets of choice? Um, and things like the defense. So that's kind of tricky for us to deal with. So why not use it on that? So we can see her 
Remember, she is range, but only a four range, so it's very short range. Almost trading and killing the aimbot, but not quite. Stormbringer finishes it off, just Stormbringer things there. Okay, so XP, we're still a little bit behind. And remember, Morelia is going to have that power spike at perk three with the dragon. That's going to be probably the be or the end or whether they, they will win or lose by that dragon interaction, I should think. Okay, so again, we spawn our mana chasers. So we were at 10 mana, we spawned those, we dropped down to eight. And then our next three manas were frozen. So we dropped down to eight, but then we effectively stayed at eight for the next three mana ticks. So again, protecting the mana chasers with the Guardian. Remember, we've paid attention to their counters. They don't have any particularly good counters for it. So we are able to do uh, some good value with it. All right, Jolo tanking for us. We just have to hope that Jolo's luck holds a little bit. So we're getting some decent damage done in here, but the um, XP is looking a bit dodgy. So perk three. There's a bit of a lull, which means our opponent is probably waiting for their dragon. We don't really want to commit too much, especially on the ground, while they're waiting for their dragon, because that breath will get a lot of value. Right, here we go. So the breath doesn't quite kill, because uh, it's, it's not really a proper curse deck, so they're not, it hasn't got a cursed ascension, so the breath doesn't kill the Lady in Frey, and we could get a lot of value out of in Frey. She's just out of range of Nirvir, so we're getting some good value from her there. We're going to tank at the top on face. Health, remember, as always, is a resource. We've got a couple of Lady in Frays here. The piercing shot's really doing some good work. The dragon's almost dead. One Lady in Frays still survives somehow. She might die now to the explosion. But that was, we handled that dragon pretty well. The problem was it was mostly on the bridge, so we just dropped a long way down on the XP. Right, Red Golem is in play. That's kind of his trap card. He's under 1500 HP, of course. So he's got the Red Golem. Now we have a lot of ranged units, a lot of some flying units, which are going to be good against the Red Golem. We also have Jolo, which is going to do a good job at tanking it. Hopefully his luck holds. Remember that first dodge from Jolo is guaranteed, but uh, you're playing you're playing the averages after that point. So at this point, it looks like we've got no chance, really. We're behind on XP, we're behind on HP. Not looking good. Lady and Frey, of course, always an option to hit face, but missing that one. But we've been able to get some good value out of the mana chasers as this game has been going on. He doesn't really have a good answer to it, which is a little bit short-sighted from him, since they're very strong, they're very familiar, they're very everywhere, really, in the, um, in the meta at the moment. That assassin getting a lot of value, but not enough, really. He has healed. He has hit Mana Frenzy. We are a long way down on XP. We really have to effectively kill him here. Or he's just going to be able to get the benefit from Mana Frenzy and close the game out. But what does he have to deal with these Mana Surges? Nothing, really. Lady and Frey's there as well. Potential hit from Lady and Frey. The Mana Surges are going to finish the game off. I call them Mana Surges. They're called Mana Chasers. But, uh, you know, let's just give them nicknames. And there we have it. That's a pretty, uh, a pretty good victory from a position that where we were behind on XP, behind on HP, wasn't looking good. So yeah, those are the two new cards. Um, I'm sure if you've been playing, you will have definitely seen the Mana Chasers. If uh, if you've seen a Mana, uh, sorry, a Spell Dancer in the Wild, please let us know, because that's like spotting Bigfoot at the moment. But uh, I enjoy those two new cards. Crystal, Elf, Dex, not really my favourite sort of thing. Um, but I do like, as I mentioned at the start, I do like the uh, mechanic they've added where you've got two iterations of the card and you can choose between them depending on how and when you play them. That's always interesting to, to add another um, another interaction for the player to, to consider and to manage um, and to also to consider and manage as you're playing against it. So that's always interesting to see. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what you think of these two new cards. If you tried them out, um, are they too strong? Are they too weak? What's your favorite strat with them? Check out the deck if you want. Let me know how you get on with it. And of course, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Badass Fish 80, and this is An Awkward Wave.